Abuse, low self-esteem, rejection, and addictions are issues affecting so many young people today. Well, on this program, you'll hear how a young man who was raised in a Christian home fell into this same destructive cycle. Today's guest is David Harrison, who will share about his journey from brokenness to complete healing. Stay with us. This is Lifeline Today. Welcome to Lifeline Today. Glad you've joined us for the program. Yes. Uh, Joan, I want to mention that our phone lines are very busy. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> I just want to bring attention to that right now. You can see the phone line on the bottom of the screen from time to time. And you can call the prayer center because the load of calls has really increased a lot in the last while. Mm -hmm. And we do want to help you. And if you get voicemail, be assured they'll call you back. And also be assured they follow up throughout the week. So and you can call during the day as well. It's been amazing, mm -hmm. hasn't it? It's just and, been uh, amazing. We want to say hello to we're all our Daystar <laughs> viewers. That's great to be on Daystar Canada. Yeah. And uh, we're glad you're part of the program today. Mm -hmm. And I know as you continue to watch the program, you'll catch the vision of this program. But today we are going to talk to a young man named David Harrison. Welcome to the Welcome, program. Welcome, David. Thank you. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so I should say right away, David has written a book called Who Am I? And it's the subtitle, Drugs to Dreams. And you can see that on the screen. And we'll make the book available through yeah. the program. So it's an autobiography. It's, it's your sure. story. Yeah. Right? Personal testimony. Yeah. Who did you write the book for, David? I wrote the book, first off, I think, for myself. <laughs> to really solidify one of the things, the story of what God has done in my life. And, and knowing as I got my testimony on paper that it was going to impact other people who are going through a similar situation for me and having walked out life with so many people in my generation yeah. who I know could identify mm -hmm. with some of the things I've gone through um, in my life having overcome different you know lies and uh, things in my life that shaped a false identity of who I was wow. and uh, you know it's been really interesting to get so many more people who have read the book coming back to me that aren't just in my generation, but are from generations, people 40s, 50s, mm -hmm. 60s, that it's making a big impact too. So yeah. really the, the heart behind it was to, to write a book about talking about coming in, into true identity and, and getting the labels off of us, the, the lies off of us, and mm -hmm. setting us on a course now, that allows us to dream. Yeah. In the opener, we mentioned that you grew up in a Christian home. In fact, your dad's a pastor. He's a great guy. He's an awesome guy. So there was no deficiency there. Uh, but I think the impact of the book here is that you were brought up in an yeah. awesome environment. Yeah. And uh, yet somehow something was went wrong in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Take us on your journey, starting from when you were younger. Yeah. I uh, grew up in an extremely loving family, a uh, good family, but sometimes growing up in a, a good loving family doesn't protect you from everything that's going to come your way. Mm -hmm. right. you know, uh, yeah. For myself, it, a lot of my journey kind of hit a really hard place uh, when I was younger, having experienced uh, being a victim of sexual abuse. Uh, How young would you say you would have been? I was six years old. Oh, wow. So, you know, just uh, at that quite a shaping time in your life, you know, yeah. it, it brought a, a And it lot was of someone confusion. outside the family, right? Yeah, someone outside the family is, you know, one of those uh, scary situations, mm -hmm. babysitter, you know, those <laughs> things that um, wow. you just, you don't, you can't forecast some of those things, right? right. And uh, yeah, it really kind of didn't realize until how much later in my life, looking back, that that really brought a lot of a lot of pain a lot of so confusion. So that happened when you were six years old yeah. and as a little boy you just put that in a compartment yeah. and went on with your yeah. life not really realizing till years later that that was a key. Yeah. So tell us about your school life because mm -hmm. I know that was huge for you too. Yeah that, that was a that was a big <laughs> obstacle for me you know I grew up in private Christian school and uh Mm -hmm. You know, there's different school settings that, that can work really well for some people. For others, it might not work. You know, it, someone might thrive at, at homeschooling where someone may not. Someone might thrive in the, the public school system and may not. But for myself, in the, the Christian uh, private school setting that I was in, it was very 
independent learning. You know, we kind of actually had a little cubicle and yeah. stared at the wall and, and did our work. And and uh, for me, I I didn't realize this till so much later in my life, but I was so distracted. Mm. I was actually dealing with a lot of a lot of trauma, and I was kind of shut in this little box. And it's kind of like there was so much stuff boxed up inside of me. As I was in this box, I, I couldn't focus on my work. I was mm -hmm. distracted. Um, at a very young age, I started to take this on myself. I'm I'm stupid. Mm. You know, I couldn't I couldn't did, get the work done. Can I done. just ask you, did, was it attention deficit as well? Did you have that? You know, they distracted? they did testing. <laughs> uh, I had some tests. I never yeah. got an official diagnosis. I think there yeah. could have absolutely been some some of that, but yeah. at the same time, you know, I uh, they never gave me an, an official thing mm. other than you know he. He may struggle to focus a little well, bit. Well, I know now in those ACE schools, you yeah. actually mark your own work. Yes, you do. Right? That's so true. So tell us about that, because you were you were giving yourself a little bit different mark than what you yeah. really should yeah. have. Yeah, yeah. I was I was definitely you know <laughs> I I had a bit of a a wild side to me too. So I was a well, little I'll bit just adventurous make this and work. and uh, so you know in my struggles <laughs> at the ACE school system. You know, if any, some of the viewers probably are watching this being, yeah, I know exactly what yeah. he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, you get to a certain place in your workbook and you go up and you pull your score key and you yeah. mark your work, what's correct, what's wrong. But, you know, even at that point, my focus is all over the place, yeah. struggling with that. And there came a point where I kind of, you know, got into a bit of a survivor mentality. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, that survivor mentality took me down a bit of a cheating road and just, yeah, yeah everything seems to be right. And get to the end of the workbook so and then fail you the test. Get the impression, you, you kind of, people get the impression that he's, he's a little bit of a ring a ting yeah. and, and, he, and yeah. then because your mar marks aren't that good, mm -hmm. you got labeled dumb yeah. in school. Yeah. And so what did that do to you? you because know, I don't think you were dumb. No, you know, I, I think it's, uh, you know, someone doesn't come out and say you're dumb, yeah. but your surroundings, point to that right but you and feel you feel dumb labeled. you feel like I'm I'm labeled a dumb I'm labeled a cheater mm -hmm. I'm uh, I'm I'm no good at this and you see other people thriving around you and you're you. the pastor's son yeah yes yeah so a you're, bit of you're there being too. imprinted yeah at a very young age now yeah. and this leads you to just go further down that well what yeah. I might as well just go further there is that right yeah well I think going further down a road is really what that further looked like was anger building on anger, building mm -hmm. on anger and frustration and really not caring. You were angry because, you thought you were angry because of the school yeah. system and yeah. having to be go to church on Sunday in yeah. that same building with the same people and then school mm -hmm. five days a week, yeah. same building, yeah. same people. Did you feel a little bit claustrophobic? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Everyone has a different situation, but for me, Some it did it thrive, absolutely. You know? Yeah, it's, people did thrive. I mean, yeah. my, my older brother graduated a year earlier with a scholarship, went on to university. Yeah. Like it was good for him. But my personalities yeah. are so different. Yeah, aren't they? it's right. But for me, it was very claustrophobic, and uh, I was looking for what I felt was some normal expression of life yeah. that didn't reflect to me as normal. It felt very. Yeah. So, yeah. how did you how, cope what, with at what age that? did you start taking drugs and going down that road, drinking? I was 13 years old, and uh, every once, I guess, a year, people would come around looking for people to deliver phone books all over the city. And at the end of that, you'd get, you know, 40 bucks for a day of delivering phone books to all the houses. And, mm -hmm. and there was a couple of guys I knew from the neighborhood had done it, and I was 13 years old, and... Uh, we decided to take our money, and one of the older brothers had marijuana and started smoking marijuana for the first time at the age of 13. 13. Yep. To and then ease the, the pain. Or yeah, I think, to the I think it was, uh, it became later on more about easing pain. Okay. I think at that point it was more about curiosity, frustration, anything that would put me farther away yeah. from that kind of life that I didn't want to live. Mm. Yeah. Right. So, you know what I'm hearing is that you're sexually abused yep. at age six, and then something, because it's unresolved, it begins to disconnect you from your, the surroundings that can actually help you, because yeah. your brother excelled in it. Yep. It starts to disconnect yep. you from relationships, and even disconnect mm -hmm. you from your mm -hmm. true self. Yeah, absolutely. You're dumb. Yeah. But you have degrees today. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're not dumb. Yeah, it's true. So that was a lie. It, it was, was a lie. Disconnecting you. It was a lie. Wow. Mm -hmm. Where Where yeah. does the wake up call come along for you in this journey? Yeah, it's uh, you know it was a long journey of carrying that stupid that lie of being even afraid to ask questions to people, not wanting to show that side. I graduated from high school two years late. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, I went off after high school and I worked in the construction. And for me, uh, there's nothing wrong with construction, but even for me, my skill set, even at construction, I felt dumb. It wasn't my first set of talents, but you know, I worked in the concrete construction and I had to really grind to make a living, you know, sometimes bent over tying rebar for 14 hours a day, doing big pours of concrete, and I ended up uh, injuring my back. Wow. Wow. And I went into a real deep depression. It was some of the darkest days I, I ever experienced. Um, mm. I thought if I can't do this manual labor work, you know, I tried to do some other manual labor jobs, and the chiropractor just told me, you just can't do any manual labor jobs for the rest of your life. Your mm. back can only heal a certain amount and you're getting an old man's back. And, no. and so I, I tried my hand at a few other things and you know, tried to do sales and oh, sales was not for me. <laughs> I would rather drink poison, I think, <laughs> than do sales for the rest of my life. It's not my personality. Um, but you know, there came a point when my girlfriend, now wife at the time, so, yeah. so my current mother-in-law said to me, Dave, why don't you go to college? Like, I was doing, you know, some, some different social work as a volunteer. Like, that's where I was finding real life. Um, doing Touching people. Doing missions mm. and stuff when I, when I first came to the Lord. And it was at, at that point in my early young adult stage that I just laughed at her. Hmm. I mean, I, it was more under my breath, but yeah. like, go to, go to post-secondary education, you <laughs> don't know like me. Kind of Sarah laughed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. on the inside, like, you know, like, that's just not yeah, going to happen. You don't know, I graduated two years late, I, I would never even get into a school, let alone pass if I got into school. Oh my. But my mother-in-law, Bobby, mm -hmm. she was a teacher at the college, and, mm -hmm. and she kind of said, no, you're not dumb, mm. you're, not, you're not stupid. She spoke... Uh, a defiance to what wow. I believed about myself because she saw something different and um, and she went ahead and, and talked to a teacher and, and found out came back to me saying you know I've talked to the head of, of the college of a certain program criminal justice and he would take you in with what your grades were yeah and at that point I, I felt really like what am I gonna do I have to try you know <laughs> I, what, someone just got me into college by a conversation yeah and uh, and so I was terrified but at the same time, I, I thought, what, I don't have you a have better plan. Nothing to lose. What, what, do, what can I lose but to try again? So yeah. We're going to continue our conversation. <laughs> this is uh, David Harrison's story. It's called Who Am I? It's a book that he's written, Drugs to Dreams. And uh, in a lot more detail. Than absolutely. We're and I, I want to just say we know you, David. You're yeah. a part of our ministry and uh, your dear wife we've known for many years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we can attest that David has gone through quite a journey. Yeah. And uh, it, to me, actually, because I never knew you at that stage, it's mm -hmm. hard for me to envision David Harrison the way you describe yeah. him in this book. Yeah. I just don't see that David at all. Yeah. And it shows you how <laughs> God has changed Absolutely. him. Absolutely. You know, yeah. you probably know people who need this book, who would really <laughs> identify, and uh, I can think of many that would need it. So uh, a contact is on the screen, and you can get the book, of course. Uh, we certainly want to sow... Uh, you, uh, I think the price is on the screen, but we certainly want to see this book in many lives that will be impacted by it. It's called Who Am I? And I know it'll really be a powerful tool. Also, our prayer lines are open. You can pray and uh, share with those who are on our phone lines. We train people, and Jill Mattis is amazing for that. So uh, we're going to share a little bit with you. We'll be right back. Did you know we have a new look to our website? Make sure to check it out. We have all the episodes of Lifeline today, Dick and Joan's story, life apps, and more. Check out the new dickandjoan.com.
Do you have sons or daughters or grandchildren that have fallen away from God? Maybe they've got into drugs or alcohol or some other kind of addiction. Maybe you've got grandchildren or children who are struggling with depression, even suicidal. There's a wonderful promise for you in Proverbs 11:21. It says, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. And you are righteous because of the precious blood of Jesus. So therefore, your seed, your children, your grandchildren will be delivered. I want to ask you to give us a call at the prayer center tonight. Right now, give us a call. Give us the names of your loved ones. Send us photographs. We'll lay hands on them. We'll anoint them with oil. We'll pray over them. And believe God with you for the miracle that's needed in your family. Give us a call right now. Now, 403-942-0123. Prayer line is open so you can call. Now, we're talking to David Harrison, and it's his book, Who Am I? His Personal Journey, mm -hmm. Drugs to Dreams, a Total Transformation. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we should have mentioned you have a wonderful wife named Ashley, yeah. two boys, and uh, one on the way, I hear. And one on the way. It's a <laughs> girl, awesome. right? And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we, we don't know. <laughs> but we'll um, you. just yeah. said that. But uh, let's go back to your wake up call. You're, um, you were very heavily into drugs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you weren't just. Yeah you know, smoking a little weed yeah. on the weekend or whatever. That's you were right. quite heavily into drugs. But yeah. one day you had a wake up call. Just tell us what that was and how, yeah. it, how that affected you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I was, one day I was, uh, I was living in an apartment, just total, total drug house, drugs coming <laughs> in, drugs coming out, you know, wow. both mm. using, selling. Yeah. And, uh, and one day I was just doing my typical go to the gas station average day and uh, a friend of mine an acquaintance had come up and pulled beside pulled up beside me in his truck while mm. I was filling my gas up and and he said so did you hear that um, Dana my friend Dana Cusance mm. did you hear that he drowned last night and mm. um, I didn't have any way to process that um, like what do you mean like drowned and came up and he's like no like he's dead and uh and i, I was just in utter shock wow. and no. he was into that too the yeah party. you know not not that same lifestyle i was so much uh we had played club soccer together for 10 years he wasn't into uh what quite what i was into but you know they were out partying mm -hmm. and uh and walking on some ice and fell through a lake and and you know they didn't uh it was quite. It was quite a journey for the family, and yeah. uh, they didn't find the body for over a month. They're having to scuba dive, and and uh, so it was really a major turning point for me because at the age of 20, you know, mm -hmm. um, totally have walked away from my family emotionally. Haven't lived with them for a while already, and mm -hmm. and uh, I have no one to talk to about this yeah. because having grown up in a loving family, a God-fearing family. I knew some truths mm -hmm. in my heart to be true that were undeniable about the Lord, about yeah. all that comes along with that, life and death. And Thank God I, those seeds were in your heart. They were in my heart, <laughs> absolutely. And so, yeah. you know, it, all I could do is go to my dad. Wow. You know, I, I walked through those church doors mm -hmm. and my dad, he had planted a, a church many years ago when I was a baby boy. I was still in that same church, still there today, mm -hmm. and, uh, and found him sitting in his church office and I just broke down and, and I wept mm. because I had that truth in my heart. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't deal with it, I couldn't cope with it, you know, and, and for me, the turning point really came about because in that drug culture, you actually have some real intimate relationships. Yes. You know, I think there's something a lot of people, if unless you've walked that out, you, you don't understand there, like any, any different circle of friends, you have intimacy. It's like but your family. It was my family. Mm -hmm. I had emotionally abandoned my family as a young teenager. Yeah. Um, hadn't been in the church yeah. or youth group since I was a, a young teenager. And, and so for me to go to my dad and find him in that, that deep place of brokenness, it was, it was because I was dealing with the reality of what's going on now. Mm -hmm. Dana's gone. Yeah. And that turning point, because of my intimacy with my relationships, I knew God was real. Mm -hmm. I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit at the age of 13 at a youth conference in uh, 
Melfort, Saskatchewan. Mm. There was the time where the, the Toronto blessing was going on. Mm. There was a real move of the Spirit. Yeah. And I had such a deep encounter with the Holy Spirit. Came out singing songs in other languages, speaking mm -hmm. in tongues, you know. Yeah. yeah. I could not deny at mm. any point in my time of turning away from my family and church and the oh. school that God was real. There was never a moment where I doubted it. I just shelved the thought of it. You put it aside. I put it aside because it was yeah. too hard to, f how does this fit into my life? Yeah. But so through that uh, process of you going back to your dad, yeah. he actually offered you the options of getting involved with some missions. Yeah. And I, I read your book and so I know that, that the missions were key mm -hmm. in your healing. Yeah. So you went to Thailand, Philippines, Philippines first, yeah. first yeah. then Thailand, yeah. and Pattaya yeah. in uh, Thailand was really huge for yeah. you, wasn't it? It was so big, yeah. And so how did those missions affect you as far as you coming back into reality? Right. Well, you know, is, uh, when, we'd, when I went on missions, I would go overseas typically for four months of time, yeah. right? So there was really something... Um, imperative for me to leave everything behind yeah and, and get into a totally different place and have um, new experiences yeah and to just go after God what does the gospel mean for my life yeah and you know my first friend who had died Dana wasn't the last I had yeah. I had an episode of a few years where I was doing funeral after funeral oh, after wow. funeral for my friends and uh, there was one point when I was about to go to Thailand, I had another friend die, and I it just it hit my grip, my heart so strong. I didn't know if I could go. I'm like, these were all drug related yeah, deaths. Yeah, yeah, partying, like, drugs, course, suicide. Accidents. The subtle message yeah. there is, maybe you're next. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would have, I very easily could have if I didn't walk away. I was, mm -hmm. I was deep into it, mm -hmm. and. Uh, but you know, there was something so hard to walk away from all my friends. Yes. And being on the mission field is like I knew I was doing it for them as, as I was, much as I was for myself. Because yeah. if I continue to live the lifestyle that I'm living, knowing the truth of the reality and the realness of yeah. God, then I'm just saying it's okay for them to never know too, right? And my mm -hmm. love for them is actually what projected me out yeah. there. And, uh, and so when my last friend had died, my brother said to me, he said, you know, Dave, I see you're really hurting. He said, but maybe the thing you have to do is find someone who's hurting more than you and help them. Wow. And that became something very powerful for me. Mm. Um, you know, I ended up working in Thailand in the heart of the sex trade in Pattaya, Thailand. And it, it did. It really took my eyes off myself. Mm. Mm -hmm. Seeing boys, girls, women from all ages, mm. um, very in your face, not hidden stuff in the city of Pattaya, Thailand, mm -hmm. where... Uh, they were trapped beyond what I understood what trapped could even look like. Yeah. And so for me, working and serving ministries that were rescuing, serving, loving these people who, who were coming in and coming out of um, the sex trade, mm -hmm. it was something that, that really got my eyes off myself and gave me a deeper purpose for mm -hmm. life. Yeah. So gradually, little by little by little, you started yeah. coming out of... Yeah. the lifestyle that you were in yeah. but there there was still that issue of the the sexual abuse when you were six yeah and you realized that that was still yeah. causing a lot of anger and yeah. it was the reason why you take two steps forward That's sometimes right. but three yeah. steps back yeah tell us what happened there because I know you had a mm -hmm. real major inner healing yeah and that changed things it did you know I I got to a place where I could say, you know, I, I came to the Lord, I started missions, I mm -hmm. gave everything, life was great, but that's just not the truth. Mm -hmm. And you can read about that in my book. It, it was a process for yes. a number of years to get actually, like you totally said, one free. step forward, two steps, whatever <laughs> that looked like, where I had yeah. to get free. And that's because I, I was trying to move forward in my walk, but I was putting a lot of band-aids oh, on my heart where there yeah. needed to be some stitches. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, so I ended up, you know, still dealing with depression, still dealing with those things as a believer. Um, it, it, yeah, it did not change overnight. And, you know, so that put me in going after some healing, going after some counseling. Mm -hmm. I've experienced over, you know, the last several years, different forms of what that looks like. But yeah. there was definitely one revelation for me that really set me free. And <laughs> it, a lot of that went back to that early trauma. Yes. You know, I... I was doing a counseling session and 
and the Holy Spirit was, it's like every time I did different counseling sessions over the years, I was getting a little bit closer, connecting the dots, yes. seeing a streamline, seeing a plumb, plumb line, mm. being able to go back and, and make sense of it and let God come in and heal those broken parts of my yeah. heart. And, wow. and for me, you know, I was able to see that when I had that trauma of sexual abuse yeah. when I was so young, I was dealing with traumatic events as a young kid and I yeah. didn't have that focus, yeah. mm -hmm. which really messed me up for my education and then that yeah. built on more and built on more and a lot of anger a lot of anger and Depression. and you know mm -hmm. it may but it, there's something that gets released when you when the holy spirit reveals to you yes yeah. where <laughs> things got in and you can start to speak truth yeah and say yeah that that was not of me or that was yeah. not of god's not yeah. who i am yeah you know i just got to share this to to show how some of that power got broken out of my life. You know, my, I did go to college and I, I was successful. Yeah. And you know, I was a year into my college, hmm. getting 90s, 100s, like one of the top students. Awesome. Uh, instead of doing it in two years, I started a semester <laughs> late. So yeah. I even went worked ahead and, and finished straight through a year and a half and caught up to the rest of my students taking extra yeah. classes to graduate with them. <laughs> but you know, there was a real light bulb moment for me. Wow. I was a year into college, top level grades, and I still had a fear that I was gonna fail the next day. Wow. wow. I thought this thing was gonna fall out. Wow. Everything's fallen out for me. And it, it was really like, wow. Dave, do you realize that? You got 90s and speaking that, there's a deep-seated lie in there. I'm not stupid. And yeah. I had to start to speak that <laughs> over myself. Actually, I'm That's smart. So, David, that, you, <laughs> you know, we're gonna have to cut you off. We're running out of time. Listen, the wow. whole story is wow. in the story. book. And uh, you go through a major healing. You have new dreams today. There's yeah. God's using you in so many ways. You've been, I want to mention that all the proceeds of the book go to a ministry Destiny that helps. Rescue. Destiny Rescue. Destiny, Destiny Rescue, Rescue yeah. helping victims uh, that are in the sex trade, children in the yeah. sex trade in mm -hmm. Pattaya and Thailand. Uh, this is uh, amazing. His story, the proceeds of the book, are also helping those who are yeah. in, yeah. entrapped just like David. And see how profound that influence was. I want to uh, encourage you to contact us. Uh, we'll make the book available to you. You can get the information there. This would be a good book to give to somebody that you know has gone through these kinds of struggles. Mm -hmm. Let's just pray for you. Lord, yeah. we thank you for these who are Father, watching the program you. and maybe they're feeling like we need to hear more. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lord, you're the more. Yes. And we pray thank that you, you will Jesus. touch them today. You will minister mm -hmm. to healing to them, yes, just like Lord. David was healed in such a profound way. Oh, Father, we ask mm -hmm. that you would just seal that with your precious blood and through the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Contact the prayer line. Thank you, uh, David, Thank you for so sharing much, with us. Thank you so much, David, for sharing with Thanks us. Thanks for having me on. I know you've been very transparent in the book. And so it's many people are gonna want your book. Oh yeah, that's yeah, a very good story. I'm really gonna encourage it, who am I? Yeah. So it shows you how his identity was changed mm -hmm. and now it's changed again back through the power of the name of Back Jesus. Back to who God made him to yeah. be. Isn't that awesome? In the first yeah. place, That's right? great. Eh? Amen. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> really glad about that. And remember that our prayer lines are there yeah. for you. Uh, happy to help you and they'll follow up, all right? Remember this though, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. See you next time. Bless you, bye-bye. Bye -bye. This program is supported by viewers like you and we thank you for your partnership. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments on the program. Be sure to visit our website for up-to-date information or get in touch with us by email or phone. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.